In this trail guide, we're going to take a detailed look at Yankee Boy Basin during the early season. And I'm going to give you everything you need to know, so I hope you join me. Hey there, my name is Dewey Jones. I am a Colorado off-roader, and what I do is I film trail guides that show you the trail from start to finish, giving you all the information that you need to know if your vehicle can do it yourself. And what we're doing today is we are filming Yankee Boy Basin, an incredibly scenic trail, beautiful trail. I am excited to do this one. It is rated as difficult in fun track, but trails off-road rates it as a one to four. So we're going to see exactly what that is. Also, I'm going to be finding out all the information that I can because there's some really awesome groups that are planning trips out here, like my friends at Colorado Overland Meetup. And we're going to be coming out here a little bit later this season, and we're going to be running these trails. So I'm going to try to scout them since I now live in Grand Junction. That's what we're going to do. We're going to show you like how beautiful these trails are and everything that you need to do to go do them yourself. And that's what we're going to be doing on Yankee Boy Basin, but I've been talking way too much. Let's get on the trail. All right, now the trail starts out easy enough, but Funtrex has it labeled as difficult and they're pretty accurate. So our goal here is to see how far can a less capable vehicle get on this trail, as well as how far can we get during the early season. And no doubt it is early season as this was filmed on May 15th, 2021. The trail starts out as a smooth dirt road, which I think anyone would classify as easy. And that's definitely a good thing as there appears to be a lot of stuff to check out here, like hikes and waterfalls. But we won't be stopping today as we have killer views and a high mountain waterfall to find. So let's get on it. Now the first 1.5 miles of this trail are surrounded by residential homes so be mindful of your surroundings as you may have locals pulling in and out of their driveways. But holy cow would it be awesome to live here as you'll see at the end there's some incredible winter adventuring potential on this trail and I want in. It's just a quick brief stop now this is angel creek campground now we can't go further down right now as of right now they're doing construction on there so the campground is closed but i have a feeling it'll reopen and maybe by the time you're watching this the campground will be reopened in case angel creek is still shut down by the time you visit it's only a short drive up the road to the next campground which is called thistledown there also appears to be a mine of the same name near this campground but we're gonna keep on moving towards the good stuff those yankee boy views Shortly after passing the Thistledown campground, we start to get out of the trees and onto the cliff's edge. Now this spot we are approaching is a sweet photo opportunity signified by a nearby natural spring. Now the best photo opportunity is from the approach that we're taking with your vehicle on the cliff edge. But I took it from the other direction because, well, I'm lazy. We're not on an obstacle or any specific place, but I am gonna fly the drone. Now, if you guys are a subscriber to the channel, you may know I don't have very good drone luck. And just recently I crashed a drone in Moab, a three day old drone, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna try to have it follow me along as we go. So hopefully you're seeing it as I'm talking right now. Thanks for indulging me on that little drone sequence and once you see how I crashed that last drone, you'll get why I was so excited about a successful flight. Anyway, we have just gained a bit of elevation and we're heading towards the mining ruins. Now this was shot on May 15, 2021, which really wasn't that early. Yet as you can see, there's still lingering snow. It also wasn't a great winter for snow production and snow totals were down. Now this all gives me some perspective on what the conditions that these miners dealt with back in the day. From this trail, I just love looking at those snow covered peaks, but we are now approaching our next scenic landmark. So let's check in. 
All right, now I think this is the spot that Trails Off Road says is scenic waypoint at 4.2. You know, is there's some rocks and you got this really nice looking mountain in the back. You know, nice little spot. From that last scenic waypoint, it's less than a mile to our next landmark, the historic Camp Bird Mine. All right, guys, we are at the point that Imogene splits off from Yankee Boy Basin. Now we are going to continue on Yankee Boy Basin, which is the main road up there. But if we wanted to go Imogene, we would take this one off to the left, the driver's side, basically. That would take us into Imogene. We will be covering that one later this summer. Hopefully we'll have the whole crew with us. That'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, let's keep on going. Let's go see what else we can see. The scenery though is spectacular here. You guys are going to love this trail, especially if you love Colorado scenery. So check it out. We will continue to climb up from Camp Bird to our next landmark, the Granite Overhang. Now, Trails Off Road calls this area the Drinking Cup, which legend says the miners used to fill up their cups from water running down the trail. Now, it is interesting to note that Fun Trek says the Drinking Cup is actually back down where that sweet photo spot was. There is some support for this as there was a natural spring near that location. So I'm not really sure where the drinking cup location is, but I'm fairly certain there was an area on the trail that miners used to fill up their cups called the drinking cup. Let's get back in the air to look at our next two points of interest, the North Imogene entrance and the Sniffles town site. As I said earlier, we're planning our future guides, including Black Bear and Imogene Pass. I think we're definitely going to take the northern route for our Imogene guide, and we may even venture back into Yankee Boy Basin to compare what it looks like in August to what it looks like in this video. All right, guys, that is Atlas Mill. It's at 6.6 .6 on Trails Off-Road. Pretty cool. I don't know the historical significance of it. I'll look it up, maybe narrate it here, or I'll bring it to you in the next trail guide on this trail. But let's keep going because it looks like it gets a little bit more fun and we're gonna keep on going. Now, I think we just passed the first bathrooms just a little while ago. There is a second set of bathrooms. I know it's open to at least the second set of bathrooms. Now from the Atlas Mill, which I did find out was primary for silver mining, the road gets a little bit rougher, but I think this is only due to early season conditions as you can see the road is still fairly graded, at least to our next landmark, the intersection with Governor's Basin. Alright guys, now we are at milepost 6.8, both in Fun Treks and Trails Off-Road. Now this is where the intersection is with Governor Basin. Now Governor Basin goes that way, right up there. Now we are gonna continue where the Jeep is. That takes us up to Yankee Boy Basin and we'll see what we got. We'll see how far we can go as this is a scouting trip. So let's keep on going. Let's go and find some good views. We'll spend more time on Governor's Basin as my goal is to document all of you race trails so you can figure out if you want to do them too. Oh, and please don't use my pronunciations for how to say these words. I definitely try to get it right, but I'm dyslexic and speaking just has never been one of my strengths. Heck, it took me like six times to say you Ray right, and I'm pretty sure I reverted back to how I was saying it before I got it right that one time already. Eh, one day we'll actually get a host that can say these things. Now taking a look at the trail, we can see it's a bit rougher and steeper compared to the trail we have encountered beforehand. I would say this is a moderate type of terrain, but I'm showing it to you so you can decide for yourself. Anyway, our next landmark is the Twin Falls parking pull-offs, but please be mindful not to block the trail. It also might actually be easier to drive to the second bathrooms and hike down to this waterfall. Now the Twin Falls are known to be very photogenic, so let's take a look at them from the sky. Now we're 
are back on the trail and we're going to see exactly how far we can actually get, but it's not looking good for going the entire 9.3 miles of this trail. As you can see, snow on the sides is getting higher and higher as we go. Now I do know the trail is open to the upcoming second bathrooms at milepost 7.7, however I couldn't find any additional information on how much further we could get. Now it's also important to note that Fun Trek shows the trail going from moderate to difficult after the second bathrooms. Typically that portion opens up when the snow melts, which is late June meaning the best time to do this trail is probably July or August when it's more likely to have snow melted. Well, we're pulling up to those second bathrooms and I think I answered my question. I can only get to these second bathrooms on this date. Now, every year is gonna be different, so be sure to check the conditions before you go. But hey, let's talk about the trail in the upcoming trail review and breakdown. All right, I'm gonna show you my full ratings and breakdown on the screen, but let's talk about the main points. Now, Yankee Boy Basin is an incredibly scenic trail with highlights including beautiful mountain peaks, wildflowers in the summer, and my personal favorite, cool mining ruins. In terms of difficulty and being somewhat conservative, I'd say the trail has enough challenge to be classified as an easier moderate trail to the second bathroom. Per Fun Treks, it does get more difficult after that point, and we'll have to see if that's true later this summer. Now, Pucker Factor, or the amount your butt clenches up due to being high up or off camber, was only moderate for me as there is plenty of room to pass on this trail. Now I wouldn't say there would be many dangers on this trail besides being high up on the shelf road, but let's take a look at the beer rating to see how rocky the trail was, and I'll show you why I want to come back here with some winter tools. Alright now we didn't finish the trail, but that doesn't mean we don't get to enjoy the fruits of our labor, and now comes the beer rating. And this is Western Slope IPA by Colorado Native. We'll see how it is. I'll put my, you know, review up there, but let's uh, let's see how rocky the trail was with an opening. Somewhat rocky. Now I was definitely jealous of that guy's skin and I'd do a lot of that if I lived here. Anyway, here's the end of the video stuff that other YouTubers tell me to include. More videos over here, subscribe down here. And if I'm getting better at editing or hosting, let me know with a like or comment. You guys are awesome and thanks for joining me on the trail today.